when the wizards at Game Freak made the Western exclusive Voltorb Flip minigame for Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver, they had no idea that speedrunners would resort to gambling to beat the game faster than they could without it. But how is spending time gambling faster, you might ask? Well, let's dive into the wild world of Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver speedruns to find out. Unlike my previous video on how speedrunners use Shuckle to beat Red in Heart Gold Soul Silver, we use a combination of glitches and no RNG manipulation. This one's the complete opposite. To start off a Hard Gold Soul Silver glitchless speedrun in the most optimal way possible, we have to preset the date and time before starting the game, then wait for a precise amount of time to pass before booting it up. This is all to manipulate a certain RNG seed from the very beginning of the speedrun, opening a whole new world of possibilities that would almost be impossible without manipulation, such as getting nearly perfect stats on your starter Pokemon, avoiding encounters before we can repel, or getting a rare occurrence such as Pokerus, which is a virus that makes our Pokemon slowly become twice as strong as normal, since you'll earn twice the amount of effort values for each Pokemon you faint while having this virus. Some people may think this type of RNG manipulation is cheating or unfair, but it's similar to how Blackjack players utilize card counting. Card counting is a strategy in which players keep track of cards that have been played in a game of Blackjack in order to determine when the deck of cards is favored for them to win. Through this more calculated method of playing Blackjack, they can adjust their betting and playing strategies compared to playing cards normally. And similar to Blackjack, we need to play our cards right, since we can't feasibly control every aspect of RNG like the RNG and trainer battles. While there are some methods to manipulate battles, those manipulations are more beneficial to other hard gold soul silver categories. And honestly, I think it makes the speedrun much more interesting, since battle RNG is a fun and large part of Pokemon. That's a crit. You're kidding. <laughs> The way speedrunners will know if they can properly control overworld RNG is by looking at how NPCs move or check if they hit the exact same trainer ID upon entering the game. And I got it first try. Wow. Nice. Hey. Let's go. Good stuff. And with precise enough movement, we can make it all the way to Goldenrod City, or more importantly, Route 33 with no encounters. Something you'll notice about Route 33 is that it's always raining, which presents a slight problem for RNG. Because if you manage to make it this far on an RNG manipulated seed, whatever movement you do on this route will affect what Voltor flip patterns you get later. This is due to the way RNG will scramble like crazy when you're in the rain. But luckily, this RNG is scrambled in a way that lets us guarantee the exact same Voltor flip patterns as long as we run non-stop and take the exact same amount of steps going in and out of the rain as we pass this trainer. There's also one final thing that moves Voltor flip RNG forward, and that's this random call from Professor Elm that only happens when we have Pokerus. Speedrunners will end up lining up this call to happen just before entering Goldenrod City, where you guessed it, we go to gamble. Just like you can gamble on me making more good content on Pokemon speedruns by subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, consider checking out my video on the speedrun progression of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. By going into the game corner to gamble, we can skip a massive shopping trip and earn a couple of rewards for being an RNG god at Voltorb Flip. For those who've never played Voltorb Flip, it's a minigame in Pokemon Hard Gold Soul Silver where players flip cards to match numbers and avoid Voltorb cards while earning coins. This is quite similar to Minesweeper, where you need enough strategy and luck to not have the game blow up in your face. Oh! But speedrunners don't need luck when each pattern will always be the same through RNG manipulation. These patterns were routed so precisely that sometimes we'll flip an extra card in order to manipulate better patterns that are more favored to give extra coins. And if you click the wrong card by accident, it's run over since the Volter flip patterns will no longer be manipulated in your favor if you mess it up. But after enough rounds of winning, we'll earn enough coins to obtain Abra, Dratini, and the TM for Thunderbolt. By grabbing Abra, we can teleport from Goldenrod City straight to Violet City, 
skipping an entire section of trainers that are normally mandatory. And this is only possible since speedrunners skip every single Pokemon Center after the one located in Violet City right before fighting the first gym leader. This becomes barely feasible through a good Faulkner fight and some solid PP management all the way through to Goldenrod City. Massive shoutouts to our poor Cyndaquil for surviving so long without healing. Our next prize, Dratini, will be used as our resident HM friend since it can learn Waterfall, Surf, and Whirlpool. But this isn't the only use for Dratini. It comes packed with Dragon Rage, making it insanely useful for a forced double battle section before entering Akrudiak City. Akrudiak is a very important location because that's where our next main, Raikou, will spawn and be sent out into the wild. And this is where that Thunderbolt TM from earlier will come into play, since Raikou somehow can't learn it naturally. Without Thunderbolts, we'd have to take this massive shopping trip into Goldenrod Mart to grab the TM for Thunder and go all the way past the Lake of Rage for hidden power. These both take a ton of traveling that used to be worth it without Voltorb Flip, but with all the new RNG manipulated changes, like a new Cyndaquil, Raikou, and completely different movement to avoid encounters, Voltorb Flip ended up winning the war on time save, netting a total of one minute saved at the cost of three minutes of gambling. But this is only one small part of Pokemon Hard Gold Soul Silver speedruns, so consider subscribing. And I'll tell you more about the wild world of speedrunning hard gold soul silver in a future video.